Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be going through all the weapons in the game and ranking them in a tier list. Before I get started, I just want to say a couple quick things. First of all, the idea for this video came from a viewer, so shout out to Tyler. I'm not sure if this video is exactly what he meant, but oh well, that's where the idea came from anyway. If you guys ever have any ideas or anything you'd want to see from me, then leave a comment and I'll do my best. So about the list itself, all the weapons that show up in the store are on it, so some starting weapons and things you find on the ground aren't there, mainly rusty weapons and things like tree branches and jugs. And these rankings aren't based on any rating system or anything like that. It's really just how a weapon feels to me, but when I'm talking about how good a weapon is, I am talking more about how it does against strong enemies with big shields and armor and stuff. So anyway, let's get into it. Starting with the E tier, this is the worst of the worst. These weapons are either really weak, really short, maybe both, and they don't have good shapes for going over or around shields. You see there's a lot of wood, a lot of starting weapons, so you probably know what it's like to be stuck with some of these. There isn't too much to say here, but there are a couple things I want to talk about. First is the cleaver and the small hammer. So these are two starting weapons, the cleaver for civilians and the hammer for criminals. As far as this tier goes, these two aren't the worst. They're pretty much the shortest weapons in the game, but they are metal and actually do pretty good damage. Since you're only really going to be using them early on, they do a pretty good job against unarmored opponents and getting close isn't too much of a problem since enemies don't do too much damage either. The wooden polearm and longsword are probably the best weapons in this tier though because they're pretty long and they do decent damage for wood. They can both thrust too, which is something I like. Still, you're going to want to move on from any of these weapons as soon as you can. So next up is the D tier, and these weapons are still pretty bad. These are the kind of weapons you'd see early on in Luck of the Draw, and there's just nothing to really like about any of them. Like the last tier, it's lots of shorter and straighter weapons that aren't good for fighting shields. You would think that the basic pick and tenderizer would be okay at getting past shields, but they're both so short and have such small striking points that they actually aren't very good for it. The pans are kind of interesting. I would have had them in the previous tier, but they're actually kind of good at a couple things. First of all, unlike the pick and tenderizer, they have a huge surface, which makes it really easy to hit people when you don't need to be precise. Also, they're really good as far as weapons go for blocking attacks. Again, the huge surface makes it kind of like using a shield. Unfortunately, their offensive output isn't quite there, so D tier it is. The most interesting weapon in this tier though is the throwing spear. If you've never bothered to pick one up, it actually does crazy damage. The problem is it breaks after it hits anything other than flesh, so I wouldn't really recommend ever taking one of these into a fight as your weapon. Maybe early on because you can hit an enemy multiple times and kill them if you're accurate but mostly look for these on the ground and take advantage of their damage. Alright, C tier, here's where we start to see some decent weapons that I'd actually use by choice. Not my first choice, but these are pretty much the worst versions that I'd want to use of some weapons that I actually like. The Chromo and the Daka aren't ideal, but if they're the best you've got after upgrading from your starting weapon, then that's fine. They can do pretty well early on, they just have some trouble with shields later. The small tridents aren't the best, but they are spears, so that's always good. The Quellidak is a weird one. I just don't like it. It feels awkward. I think the shape is a negative. It feels like the tip sometimes hits things before the rest of it, and it just screws up what you're trying to do. I don't know, maybe I need to use it more, but until then, not really a fan. The Morgmala and both Spike Malas are kind of the same way. They have good stats, but they just feel so awkward. With them, I think it's because of how high your right hand is on the weapon. If they were more like the Great Chaka, I think it would be a lot better. As it is, I feel like you can barely swing them, and it just isn't good. The last one I want to talk about in this tier is the Wooden Staka. You might be wondering what a wooden weapon is doing here, and well, it's actually not that bad. First of all, it's a spear, which is always good, but not only is it a spear, it's one of the longest ones. In fact, it's one of the longest weapons in the game, which is just really good because you can pretty much hit anyone without worrying about them being able to hit you. Now of course it is still wood and as such it doesn't do much damage, but I actually took it into a high level fight to see how it would do and it wasn't great but it was usable, mostly due to its length, but that should tell you what you need to know. If it can be used at this level you'll be fine using it early on and it shouldn't be seen as a bad option if you just want a spear. Alright, moving on, we've got the B tier. These are good weapons, not many of these really have huge flaws. You can see it's still mostly straight weapons. Shape is really important for me, so that's the main thing that's holding these ones back. But you can still do some real damage with these, and if you have a chance to pick one up, you should. You probably noticed the basic chaka and the splitter chaka are kind of the odd ones here. They've got some shape to them, but they aren't quite up to par with their better versions. The basic chaka is just really short and doesn't really have great stats. As for the splitter, it does have pretty good stats, but it kind of feels awkward to me like the spiked malas. At the end of the day though, they're both axes and effective against shields, so they aren't bad weapons by any means. You also probably noticed how many two-handed swords there are in this tier. 
And that's because they're all good weapons, they just don't really have anything special about them. They do good damage, but they aren't good at dealing with shields, and blunt weapons will do better against armor. One cool thing is the Trotica. You can actually use it one or two-handed, so that's not actually that useful, but you do get two styles out of one weapon. One that isn't so cool is the Gatheldaka. It costs like 20-something thousand, which is crazy for any weapon, but especially for this one since there's nothing special about it. There are a couple other interesting weapons on this tier. The Iron Claw, for one. This thing does a ton of damage, it's really fast, and it would be higher on the list if it wasn't so fragile. 39 durability is nothing, and you pretty much won't get through a single fight with it intact. The Flathead Staka is here because even though it's a spear, which is always good if you weren't sure, it is really short. Pretty much any other spear is going to outrange you, which can make things awkward with this. The Long Spiked Mala is really good. It's really fun and it just looks good. It makes me wish it was better against shields. It can thrust though, so as a non-shield fighting weapon, it's one of my favorites. Last but not least, the Spiked Club. Don't be fooled by the appearance, this thing's sick. It does a ton of damage and more importantly, it's super cheap. It costs less than 2,000 gold, which makes it one of, if not, the cheapest good weapon in the game. Again, the straightness of it isn't great for dealing with big shields, but you can bonk the heck out of pretty much anything else. Alright, time for the good stuff. A tier, we've got the flails, a couple spears, and the talisdakas. Talisdakas, they're swords, and pretty straight. What are they doing here? I'll get to that, but first the Maradon Chaka. It's here too, and it's pretty good. It's just a better basic chaka, and it's very nice for going over shields. Alright, Talisdakas, what's up with them? Well, they're just damn good. They don't have the shape, but holy do they have the damage. The iron one in particular? Bronze is good too, but the iron, this thing ends fights so quickly. It's really long too, so you can sometimes get over shields and hit something. Either way, a few shield bashes and follow-up swings will do the job anyway, so... Despite the shape, don't ignore these swords. As for the flails, the only reason they aren't even higher is their reliability. First of all, their durability isn't the best, but mostly it's the annoying trait they have that makes them fly out of your hand every two seconds. That's the kind of thing that can get you killed in harder fights, so for that reason, A tier it is. And finally, the spears we've got here are the Borstaka and the Basic Tridy. The Borstaka is great, I don't even have anything to say about it other than it's just not quite as good as the spears above it but if it's the only spear you ever get your hands on, you should still be happy. The trident, on the other hand, it's good, don't get me wrong, but it's not perfect. With spears, you're typically trying to strike with precision, and having two extra points can kind of screw that up sometimes. Other than that though, it's long, it does good damage, and it's a spear, which is always good. And here we are, S tier, the best of the best. These weapons are all pretty much perfect as far as I'm concerned. They really make even the toughest enemies a cakewalk. The two-handers are all pretty straightforward. They do crazy damage and bully shield users. The spears, you may have heard before that spears are always good, and these ones are the best. The Faradak is good without a shield too, so that's cool. And the Iron Kappa, it looks a little out of place here, but it's just so good too. Its shape is great, it goes over and around shields for fun. I made a video talking about which weapons were good for going over shields, and I didn't mention this piece, which was a mistake, because it's better than the axes. It's also the only weapon here that isn't long as heck, so that's good if you're sick of people being in your face while you're using a spear. The last one I want to quickly talk about is the Heavy Hammer. It's amazing as a weapon, it does everything you could want, but the real beauty is the price. It costs less than 6k, which for a weapon like this is nothing. You can get that by like week 4 or 5, maybe earlier with a bit of luck. And if you have this big piece that early on, your opponents can forget about living. Because of the price, I'd go as far as to say this is the best weapon in the game, all things considered. And that's that, so hopefully this is helpful for you guys when you're picking a weapon in the shop, or maybe you just enjoy listening to me ramble on. Either way, thanks for watching, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time.